Greetings, people of the internet. This is Scott with CircWorks Art Labs, welcoming you once again to our underground laboratory where we're always working on improving our arsenal of robots, alien zombies, and other imminent threats to humanity. And in that other category, we are also working on some miscrits, or we have been, and we had to take a little break, and I apologize for that. We had some major malfunctions here in the lab as far as the computer labs go, and we lost a lot of information, unfortunately. So I actually had to redraw what you saw in the, the last miscrit uh, creature creation video, the line art portion. So, uh, but we I did redraw that, and since then we've, we went ahead to the next step, so a little bit of a setback, so I apologize and I thank you guys for bearing with me through that, but uh, we're going to get back to it. We are going to color our miscrit and that's, gonna, that's pretty much going to complete this, uh, this miscrit uh, evolution one. Now if you want to see more of these, um, I really, it really would help out if you guys want to subscribe to the channel, hit that subscribe button because the more successful this channel is as far as growing this channel, uh, that's going to dictate how far we go with the Miscrits thing. So far we've got like tons of views, you guys are watching uh, a lot of these Miscrit videos and that is super cool, but uh, there's so much other stuff in the channel so I want you to check that out, I want you to hit subscribe and hopefully we'll be doing more of these in the future, but it's up to you guys, so come on. This is the push. This is like the the uh, the the PBS uh, drive push, but it doesn't cost you anything. All you have to do is push that uh, subscribe button. But anyway, um, enough about that. Let's get on, and we're gonna go, and we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna go back down to the computer labs. Hopefully, everything's up and running again, and we're gonna color uh, our miscrit and finalize that first evolution. So let's get to it. All right, everyone, let's get back to working on our miscrit. Now we've opened up our Adobe Illustrator program, which is a program I use. And again, there's there's some other programs, uh, vector drawing programs that you can use that uh, I believe there's some free ones out there. You have to Google them. I think Inkscape, I think, is one of them. And there's some other ones as well. Um, I don't exactly know how to work those, so that might you might have to do some research on that. Um, but there are cheaper alternatives because this can be an expensive uh, software. And actually, I'm using an older version now. They've got the Creative Cloud, which is all you know, it's on the cloud and it's all constantly updated and everything. Which uh, um, I may switch over to soon, but I can do pretty much anything I want to with this version. But anyway, so this file looks suspiciously like the one we were using in um, episode in the in part uh, three. Um, but as I mentioned before, it's all new because I lost that file and had to recreate it. The good thing is I was able to. What I did was I just went to the my YouTube channel, pulled up my YouTube video, took a screenshot of me working on that other one and i was able to pull the colors so i knew exactly what the colors were because i just took they just sampled the colors from the, what we had before and i was able to recreate this the exact pretty much the exact same color scheme and everything and i had the original hand-drawn line art because i drew that by hand i scanned that in and then i traced it over so it's always it always takes less time when you have to redo something i mean it is a pain but the good thing is you've kind of already done it once, so you know, you, you can skip some of the mistakes you did when you're kind of figuring out how to do it. But anyway, so what you see me working on now is you've noticed that I've taken what was just, like if you see to the left, that that's actually the screen, that one that just, you just see the line art, that's the, that's the screenshot I took from the YouTube and I just kind of cropped it out and everything. Um, but that's kind of what this looked like before. And as you see right now, what I'm doing is I'm selecting all the shapes and I've got, um, I've got palettes that I created. Now they're kind of off, off screen now, but you saw them before. You can kind of see part of them. You can just see these, the little, um, the outlines, those circles up there. But what I do when I create a palette is I, and I, I may have touched on this on the earlier video, but I'll create whatever the base color is that I'm going to be using. And I'll have the fill, which is, you know, the, the color that's inside, and then the stroke, which is the color, the outline. Um, and I'll have, here you can see, like right now, I am drawing um, his pupil. 
not his pupil, sorry, his iris. And uh, and so the inside there, the lighter blue, that's the fill on the outside, that's the, that's the stroke. And I create, you know, I create palettes and it's real, it's basically just a circle with the fill inside and the stroke outside for the base and then just the fills for the highlights and the shadows. And I'll usually have one highlight, one shadow. Sometimes I'll have more than one shadow. Um, and then I go about, I just select the lines that I've already created, which you saw before in the previous video. And I use my eyedropper tool, and there's some shortcuts here. Um, the eyedropper tool on your tool palette looks like an eyedropper, but it's also the shortcut for that is the letter I, and you can always remember eyedropper letter I, and that's the shortcut. And you click on that, and as you can see that come up right there, and I, I, just, I just select the color on my palette, and it turns, I select the shape I want, click the eyedropper, touch the palette I want, and it'll convert it to, from just the, the stroke, the outlines, to the fill and the stroke. So now that I have all, you know, pretty much all my, all my fills and strokes and you know, everything's solid colored. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to go in and I'm going to add my highlights and my shadows. And the way I do that um, is there is a on your on your tool on your toolbox where all your tools are. And this may differ depending on what version of this software you're using. Um, there, this on mine CS5. The second from the bottom, there's a little icon that looks like a circle. A white circle with a dark square in front of it and there's a tool inside there's three if you click on that there's three and I'm sorry you're not seeing that on the screen right now um, you might it might pop up as I as I go and if you can it's kind of sped up so you might yeah you kind of miss it because it's so sped up but uh, you have three options you'll have one that says draw normal draw behind and draw inside and what I do is I use that draw inside function. So I'll, I'll click on my shape. And then once you click on that, you're going to have, once you click on that, you're going to go to draw inside. And you're going to click on that. And what's going to happen is you're going to have your bounding box, which are, it's, it's basically any time you touch on a shape, you're going to get this box. And it's got these little handles on all the corners. And that's your bounding box. You're also going to have, when you click on draw inside, you're going to have a dotted line around that. And you can kind of see it pop up as I go along. Um, but you can't draw in that shape yet. You have to click on your artboard. And once you click on your artboard, then the bounding box will go away and you'll just have that dotted line. And that means it's ready. You can start drawing in it. And then when, then what you do, and the purpose of drawing inside, it, ta it, it, it seems to save some time because you're just, it's just going to allow you to draw in the shape you're drawing. So as you can see, I kind of went around the outline and that's not going to show up. You can watch as I do this. The only thing that's going to show up is what's in that shape. Um, and it's, this really speeds up the process drawing like this. You can kind of, again, just kind of look for my examples. You can see, and this is sped up, but it's still a lot faster. There are some drawbacks and not everyone that draws Miskritz likes to do it this way because sometimes going back and editing it, like a lot of times when we do um, special versions or dark versions or whatever, sometimes it's kind of hard to go back in um, and select those different shapes to change the color. It's not impossible, but there are some tricks to having to do that. And some people, especially if you're working, if you're handing off to a different artist, it can be problematic. But since this is just me drawing this and I'm the only one working on this, and because I'm not really, be, I'm not really working for a broken bulb anymore, I'm, you know, so I'm not getting paid for it. So I'm gonna try to do this as quickly as possible. But even when I was working there, this is the technique that I used because um, I could just get a lot, I, you know, a lot, lot done a lot quicker so um, once you can kind of see that box around and you can see once I start drawing in um, so yeah so definitely use the draw inside function now another thing you want to want to consider is once you're done drawing your shape you you're gonna cl double click on your artboard which is just the white the white area of your board here anywhere and that will deselect it now if you decide you want to go back into a shape that you've already drawn inside, you 
you know, you'll select it and then you'll try to go to the same thing, that little circle with, with the square in front of it icon, the second one from the top of your toolbox, the one that says draw normal, draw behind and draw inside. And you'll notice that your draw inside is grayed out, which means you can't do anything with it. Um, and now there's a workaround for that. And all you have to do is, if that happens, if you've already drawn inside a shape and you've deselected it, it won't let you go back in unless instead of clicking your selection tool which is the black arrow and that that the shortcut for that is the V button on your keyboard and you can just remember the V because it looks like an arrow um, but if you want to go back in and select an area that you've already selected I mean that you've already drawn inside it won't let you use the direct selection tool which is the white arrow arrow and the shortcut for that is the A tool and you can remember that because it's it's the other key on your keyboard that looks sort of like an arrow with a line through it in A. Um, now if you now if you click it with your direct selection tool it will let you use the, the draw inside um, so it's it's kind of a weird thing but there's a little work around it took me a while before I realized that because I was like when I first started working with this I'm like oh I can't I, I can't forget you know I gotta do everything at once because there's no way to go back in there but there is and it's just using that direct selection tool um, so anyway, as you can see, I'm starting to add more highlights and more um, more shadows and everything, and that's really kind of what pops it out. You want to be conscious of, again, we've talked about this before, but um, you want to think of everything sort of as uh, a 3D shape, so you want to know where your shadows are going to be. So, you know, each one of these little shapes that we've created is you know we try to look at that in a 3d space so wherever the sun's coming from from here it's going to be the upper left and then so we're going to fill the other if you think of that as a, like a ball like if we're looking at kind of the muzzle of his face now it's not a it's not a total ball you know it's a little different shape but you can kind of figure you can kind of see where it kind of curves around and it's got the shadow on the other side and on, on the highlights um on the top there so um, and you want to just do that with pretty much all your different shapes now now here I'm kind of going in with the fur so um, just add a little bit of highlight to kind of pop that out and everything um, and you just keep working at it like this I mean it's it's um, once you once you've you know it's a lot of repetition so once once you've kind of got one portion down um, you're just it's at least the far as far as the coloring uh, portion of this um, you just you know keep keep working at it you know and then sometimes you know sometimes I'll go in and like right now if you look at the the bottom like under he's kind of got that red fur and the blue underneath like his kind of his torso uh, where his legs meet um, I do have one shadow in there but I don't to me that's not enough so I'm probably gonna go in and add a, another a darker shadow um, now the one thing when you are drawing a miscrit you'll you, you've got your strokes the outlines around each one and you want to make sure that that is the darkest um, of that particular color so with the red you've got it's almost you almost go to black you go you, you when you pick your colors you can go you know get your red then get your shadow and then even darker than whatever that shadow is is going to be your stroke you still want a little bit of a, you know a red tint to it but but you want it to be closer to, you know, have some more, you know, black in it or whatever. Um, or with like the yellow, you can see it's almost the outline for that. Um, like on the tip of his tail there, you'll see it's almost like a, a brown, um, kind of an orangish brown. So just depending on, you know, and uh, like if you look at his, his toenails and his fingernails, they're kind of like a kind of a creamy color. Um, that's not going to be as close to a dark some sometimes i see people you know going a little darker on those outlines and that's fine you know it's that's sort of a personal preference i don't i don't like them to be too dark um but anyway so uh make sure that you know your darkest your, your darkest color is your stroke color now um sometimes Especially with blues, I find, and there's some co other colors like this too, but blues, this particular shade of blue, if you try, because I'll pick the highlight, basically I'll go into like the color picker, like if you click on your little swatch button, um, let's see, 
you're going to get a color picker and it's just going to it's going to show this range of different colors that you can pick from and it'll have a little circle that shows what color you're on now and you can go just right around that area if you go up a little bit you'll get a little brighter if you go down below that area you're going to get a little darker but sometimes the colors if you you know sometimes when you're picking a color especially with this particular blue it just doesn't look right it doesn't mesh so one of the things you can do that I did with this uh, with the outline here is and you can see I just kind of dropped that in um, like I was talking before where the the darker shadow underneath you know underneath his his kind of leg area there his groin and everything um, that's a little darker and what I did was I took the I took the the darkest color that um, that outline that stroke that blue stroke bluish green stroke and made that the color of the shadow and then I just made it a little bit transparent you can play with the transparency so it's otherwise it's going to be the exact same color of of your stroke but if you just adjust the transparency just a little bit then you're going to get you know you're going to get a, sh a shade and it's also going to blend with the color that's in back so that's going to help it it kind of match with that color because you're getting some of your base color shining through and you can avoid colors that just don't seem to work exactly right now here what I'm doing is I've created one version of these little this little bulb and I'm just duplicating it I'm copying it now here I kind of adjusted the size and I'm gonna rotate it a little bit um, just so it you know because in certain certain perspectives as it wraps around you're gonna notice that the bulbs are gonna be more like an like an oval shape route rather than just round but most of them are just round so I'm just duplicating it I've got the little colored highlight on it and everything and just replacing what I have already there that I'm just using as a as a marker to know where to put these bulbs just replacing those with the the one that I created and if it, if necessary I kind of adjust the size and everything um, but it's again it saves a lot of time I'm not I'm not creating every single bulb I'm just creating one and kind of duplicating it and everything um, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to match the same look of this bulb because I want his tail to start emanating this kind of electricity that you see so I'm gonna start with the tail I'm gonna you know I'm gonna go ahead and draw do my draw inside add my shadow color then add my highlight and then see you can see I was just sampling that same color right from the bulbs that I did before you can do that with your eyedropper tool you can sample pretty much any color you want now I'm creating my um, my glow and I'm gonna do another version here um, and when I'm drawing right now I'm using the pen tool which you can kind of use and you can drag those bezier curves and everything but a lot of times when I'm when I'm doing these um, most of what I've done when I'm drawing inside I'm using my pencil tool uh, the pencil tool, the shortcut for that, it looks like a pencil on your toolbox. The, sh the shortcut for that is the N because the P is the pen tool. So it can't be, the P can't be the pencil tool. So you just remember pen -sol. <laughs> Well, pen has N in it too, but it's the, the N tool is the pencil tool. The P tool is the pen. Um, but the pencil tool allows you to kind of just draw, draw like you would normally. Um, the pen tool again you have to drag these points and everything so if you're if you're good at it um, if you have good control of your pencil tool you can draw your shapes and everything with the pencil tool when you draw inside and everything like that so anyway I hope this you know I hope this made sense there's a lot there's a kind of a lot to cover and I know I'm kind of blowing through stuff like that but if you have any questions let me know um, and again uh, please um, subscribe or looking to try to get some more subscribers because we want to do some more of these miscript videos but again that's all going to be dependent on how many more subscribers we get um, if enough people want me to do more of these uh, miscript videos then show that by subscribing to the channel and uh, leave a comment if you have any questions and like the video and do all that stuff and hopefully we'll do another one of these hopefully because I'd like to do the other evolutions but that's up to you guys so um, let me know by subscribing to the channel and we, we get uh, get enough people interested we'll continue on with this series and thanks a lot and that is all